All right, I am here with Tyler Kashke, or in my living room, I helped him out film a, a video for YouTube doing some, like a lighting diagram, more to come. I don't even know where it's gonna be posted, but was happy to help him out. And now we're wrapped. And Thank uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, YouTube videos are like a little bit harder than it seems, right? Absolutely, I have so much more respect for uh, creators on this platform a lot more than what I do, which is just make pictures and Photoshop <laughs> mostly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of tough, like, especially when you're, you know, you're always trying to, like, make new content and, like, it's never gotten easier for me. Yeah. Like, no. intro, especially intros and outros. I hate those so much. I mean, that's your hook. They're the and app. then it's like, you, you're going to be judged by those bookends. Everything in the middle is useless if unless those two things are good. <laughs> yeah, exactly so happy wrap on that project yeah, no kidding. and um <laughs> now we're we're at our wrap party having yeah. some some beers that you brought over kindly so um tyler here he is a gaffer his, his handle is at colorado gaffer colorado underscore gaffer is that what it is underscore gaffer yeah colorado at colorado underscore gaffer you can see it here or here somewhere around here and um i just wanted to just chat with him while he is here. I've been wanting to make a video with him for a long time. Uh, just about being a gaffer and kind of things to think of on set and all that kind of stuff. So first of all, for those watching here, um, maybe, you know, there's a lot of people that are maybe one man band kind of filmmakers or uh, just getting into the industry or, or wanting to get into filmmaking and they hear the term gaffer or all the time I hear people you know, when I tell them I'm a filmmaker and they see the end credits on a movie and they say like, I always see gaffer. What is that? What is a gaffer, Mr. Colorado Gaffer? <laughs> well, a gaffer is the chief lighting technician on a film set. So you're generally the DP, director of photography's right-hand person, and you're kind of their second pair of eyes on the monitor. You're going to the location scouts, you're talking about the vibe, you know, what you want to accomplish and, and how you want to approach it. And then the DP may get come to you with sort of a loose sort of conceptual idea of what they want, like soft light through the window, it's warm and whatever. And the gaffer is left to figure out which fixtures and the power distribution and how that's all going to be uh, technically done. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, you kind of need to have an eye for lighting, you need to know about uh, some basic cinematography stuff, but there's also some, you know, more soft skills and things involved as well. Definitely, yeah, they say a, uh, a good DP is made great by a gaffer, and that is so true. And, I mean, it, when you get on the set with other crew where there's a gaffer and a sound recordist and everything, like, it, it really makes... I mean, it really does take a village. I mean, we were just talking about that it's called a production for a reason, you know. When, when the director of photography can really focus on the whole image and not have to do all the lighting and everything, setting up the lighting as a lot of us do with one-man band stuff, DPs can really start to focus on lens choice, camera movement, all that kind of other stuff that you really want to focus on, but if you're a one-man band, you don't have that opportunity because you're focused on you know, getting lights and all that kind of stuff. So appreciate the little insight into what a gaffer is. Now, for maybe some people that are watching this right now, they might be interested in maybe they're just getting into filmmaking or maybe they are really interested in the lighting department and either maybe they want to become a, you know, get on set somehow as you know a PA or an assistant or, maybe even just like an assistant to the lighting department. Uh, what would be like two or three things that, on like the technical side of things, that you wish you knew kind of getting into being a gaffer that you could pass along to somebody that's trying to get on set? Sure. I would say one of the most important things is just kind of being, I mean, and when you're just getting started, you don't need to necessarily be super technically proficient. No one's expecting you to know how many stops difference, whatever the, the key light from the background is or the, the contrast ratio that you're trying to achieve. Like you're really just extra hands and you're trying to anticipate the next move, you know? So you're listening to what the gaffer and the key grip 
and the best boys and you know the G and E department and the the DP sometimes what they're saying what they're asking for and you know just paying attention I think that's a big big thing so for example if you know you're following the gaffer to set up you know he's got a light or they have a light and they're going to set it up you, you're following them with a stinger, an extension, an extension cord to run power, and a sandbag for the stand, and maybe a stand as well. Like you're, you're just, if you see someone carrying that, you shouldn't be necessarily told to do that. If you just take the initiative to do that without being told, I feel like that really sets you apart and uh, above and beyond of what's expected of you. Um, aside from that, I mean, like I said, there's not. You need to have some fundamental understanding of what you're trying to achieve and of the equipment and what it's capable of. But I mean, like basic things like how to set up a C stand and safety things, you know, like putting the big leg in the front and having the knuckles on the right side so that everything is, is sound and secure. And then obviously putting sandbags on things, um, as a swing, as someone who's kind of just entry level in the grip and electric department, like you're, you don't have, there aren't a lot of expectations. You just need to be present and aware and listening. And I think what goes even further um, is, is kind of more your interpersonal skills and how people get along with you and, you know, just your general vibe, I guess, in a very vague sense. I mean, it's just, do I like you as a person? Do you show up on time? Um, do you show up early? More importantly, that's, that's a big thing. Um, and then just, are you fun to work with? You know what I mean? So, Getting in and making those connections is probably one of the hardest parts, but once you're in, if you can show up early and just smile and get along with people, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're good to go. That's great. Now, what about like, you said like kind of interpersonal things, like, is there anything like, that's kind of a, like an unspoken rule with, with regards to like being on set, especially kind of being, lower on the totem pole yeah well i mean i think the we all know that you know film sets bigger film sets are very hierarchical in structure mm -hmm. and for good reason they need to be organized and when you're talking like you know there's there's a lot going on it is called it is a production so the big thing to consider is is that structure and if you see something um and you have a suggestion that you feel is valid you know being discreet about that and taking it to the person directly above you or, you know, in your department and not blurting something out when the DP and the director are talking because you'll just end up embarrassing yourself. But if you talk to, you know, if you're a swing and you talk to the gaffer and you say, well, have you thought about this? But, you know, tap them on the shoulder and, and be discreet about it. You know, if it's a good idea, they may implement it or they may not. But, you know, you're not just spitting out ideas um, where it's, it's not an even playing field, uh, so to speak. Totally. In those, in those instances. Okay, so there are terms in grip and electric, and we're not going to go over all of them because there are so many, but what are like, say like three of the most common terms on set? So like stinger, we got stinger. That's, that's a common one, yeah. That's okay. an extension cord, yeah. basically. Thank that, you for that's that. That's just an extension cable. <laughs> What are like two other really common names on a film set that somebody coming into a film set would be like, what are you, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what sticks out to me, because I had a bit of a non-traditional career path. Sorry for touching my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bit of a non-traditional career path. I didn't go to film school. I went to, I studied still photography in school. So I didn't learn a lot of the names of modifiers and things like that. And I just, I started PAing because I had friends that went to film school and they brought me on to the projects. And anyway, I was, you know, obviously always interested in like the grip truck and G&E and stuff. And uh, one of the groups was like, go grab me a floppy off the truck. And I was like, what the heck is a floppy? What? I don't know what that is. Yeah. Um, what is a floppy? A floppy. I mean, it's, it, it comes in many shapes and sizes. Um, but it's basically, you know, a, a, f a flag that has Velcro on it and one side flops off. But it can be Hence made floppy. of ultra bounce. It could be, you know, a solid. Usually they're solid, like flags, like black. Um, they can come in different shapes and things like that. But yeah, generally when someone says bring me a floppy, they're they're referring to a four foot by four foot solid black flag with a floppy side, which turns it into an eight by four. That is a perfect example because the first time I heard floppy, I'm like, 
what? Yeah. And then I saw it, I was like, that doesn't look very floppy. Yeah. But then I was shown what, and then I was like, oh, that makes more sense. Yes. Okay, so then there's two more. There's junior pin and there's baby pin. Mm -hmm. And when I was getting started out, I had no idea what that meant. What junior pin versus what baby pin meant. Yep. Junior pins and baby pins are pretty much the only two sized uh, grip receivers or pins that you will find on any equipment. Uh, a, a junior pin or receiver is an inch and an eighth, so it's bigger. You'll see it on, you know, bigger heavy duty lights like a sky panel or something, where it's it's big. It goes inside the junior receiver on a combo stand. Um, a baby pin is something you will see. Uh, it's five eighths inches, and you'll see that's the the you know the arm of a C stand that's. Um, you know, on smaller lights, you'll see it on, on some lighter gauge equipment or on the handles of like Cardellini clamps and other things like that. And it all kind of fits together in that way. Um, but those are two, the two uh, the two pins or receivers that you'll see on any grip equipment. And they're, you know, once you figure out that baby is small and junior is the other one, you're good. <laughs> Sometimes with like the 600D and the Nova and I think the spotlight mount mm -hmm. has what I think is like the coolest design ever. It's a dual junior baby pin. So basically it can fit in a junior pin receiver or on a baby pin on a C stand, which I think is pretty stinking genius. It's very innovative. Yeah, it is. Well, that's, that's going to be it. I, this, I'm sure this video is already long enough, but um, <laughs> I really appreciate you taking some time just yeah. to kind of hang and uh, talk uh, in the world of being a gaffer, uh, I don't. I feel like there's just not an, a lot of videos on YouTube about mm -hmm. dedicated to a gaffer. Right. It's always like, hey, what's a gaffer? What are the lighting? Okay, cool. What's the DP? DP. Oh, cool. What's Cameras. the camera? Oh, lenses. Oh, the camera. Oh, map Sick. box. Yeah. Oh, a tripod. Yeah. Like. Everything. Omg. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> what I don't think people realize getting into the industry or watching a movie is that without a talented grip and electric department and a lighting technician that knows the stuff without that a dp is like i mean so limited yeah i think some of the best dps have also worked as in the grip and electric department as gaffers or key grips or whatever and i think that experience really helps them communicate you know their their lighting and their uh their feelings that they're trying to achieve you know in a more technical way um, than someone who hasn't and it can be pretty evident when someone, a DP on a big shoot has never worked in g and &E. And you're like, what? You have to really translate, you know, kind of decipher what they're trying to say. And it, it just slows things down a little bit. So totally, I would highly recommend anyone who's interested in ultimately being a DP, a great path is to come up in gri grip and electric department. If a DP can go on set and communicate with a gaffer you've never worked with on kind of more technical stuff, that's gonna make the crew way more efficient that's going to make the relationship a lot better and that's going to make everyone way more successful. Absolutely. Not, not to mention just the experience of knowing how long certain setups are going to take, you know? So if, if some, if a, you know, a DP has never worked in G and E and wants to do a big setup, you know, when they're sitting down with the assistant director, making a schedule for the day, they're not going to know like, Oh, we need two hours or like a pre rig, like, pre-light day to make this like fit into our schedule. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna, that DP is gonna talk to their grip and electric department and tell them what they want. And they're gonna be like, in half an hour? Like, there's no possible way. Like, we can't, we can't do that. <laughs> totally, yeah, yeah, so. we've, de we've all been there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, appreciate your time. Thanks for hanging. Uh, I'm gonna let you, for, we're, we're both gonna finish these beers and yes. uh, get your footage to you and, and let you be on your merry way. But thanks so much for uh, hanging out. Thanks so much for coming on and uh, giving, uh, uh, giving me and the viewers some insight into the world of uh, the lighting department. Thanks for having me. It was a great time talking. Cheers, dude. Cheers.